Uh, you might like to know that Labour's deputy leader, Angela Rayner, has today written to the BBC chair, Richard Sharp, and also the director general, Tim Davy, to call for the resignation of Sir Robbie Gibb from the BBC board, following reports that he tried to block a senior editorial appointment on political grounds. The letter calls on the BBC chair and director general to ask Sir Robbie Gibb to resign his position as well as opening an investigation on how it happened. Well, I'm joined now by Joe Stevens, Shadow Culture Secretary, to talk about this. Joe, good morning. Good morning, James. Thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning. So let's talk a little bit about this. Um, isn't it right that if somebody has made some very um, serious political uh, comments or thoughts known, that are they really right for an editorial position of an entity that's supposed to be uh, neutral? It depends what evidence you're referring to as very political comments. Um, this is a senior editorial position at the BBC for whom you know well-qualified candidates have applied. And you have a government placeman inside the BBC who is a non-executive director who's, who's supposed to remain impartial, telling the person in charge of the recruitment, you cannot appoint her, referring to a specific candidate, because this will destroy, the sh it will shatter the government's fragile trust in the BBC. That is absolute political interference in BBC recruitment and should not happen. But isn't that quite good guidance on the basis that the BBC is trying to fight for its future? It needs to make sure that it's editorially independent. If you've got somebody who isn't, who's appointed to a senior position, that's not great, is it? Who says the person is not independent? You know, the, it appears to be the person who's saying that the applicant is not independent is Robbie Gibb, who's not independent himself. And he's in a job where he's supposed to be independent. That's the whole point of being a non-executive director. You're there to uphold the impartiality, the governance um, of the BBC properly. And it seems to me and to my colleague Angela Rayner that, you know, he has resolutely failed in, in his role and he should go. Uh, you may say that, but then isn't your move politically motivated? My move is to protect the BBC. The BBC is a great British institution that is an impartial broadcaster, impartiality at its heart. You cannot have whatever colour government, whatever stripes the government is, you cannot have the government interfering in operational and editorial decisions at the BBC. It's just wrong. You say it's just wrong, but uh, Labour has a history of having done that during its period in office, that you parachuted many people who were former ministers and various others into positions of power and influence at the BBC. So for you to call for this seems a little bit what, off colour. What we're talking about here is interference by a non-executive director in a recruitment process to an editorial position. If you can give me an example of when Labour have ever done that in the past, I'll listen to that argument. But I'm afraid, you know, we're talking about two different things here. This well, we is may be, but the BBC... Is interfering in a recruitment process to gain political influence into the editorial control of the BBC. That is wrong. Well, you say it's wrong, but then you haven't really answered my question, because in the past, the, B the BBC has been influenced by all political organisations. I'm, you know, I'm certainly not going to uh, just say it's just Labour. It's not just Labour. Any government in power has done what they can to influence the BBC by the people that they appoint, not only to uh, the board, but elsewhere, the way that they govern it, the way they fund it. The BBC is not as impartial as you might like to think that it is. Well, I think if you look at the output of the BBC which is regulated by Ofcom, um, if people think that it's being partial and it's not um, maintaining its impartiality, there is a process that can be gone through to complain to Ofcom. Um, this yes, is a which they don't issue. listen to and don't act upon. Can you give me an example of that? Yes. There are plenty of examples. So, for example, uh, there was a discussion... Um, yeah, there, there have been quite a few... Um, well, you can't give me a specific example. No, 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 example I, I will give you a very so, specific... You know, no, 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 but, I will give you a specific... No, 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 I will give you a specific example. No, you've asked me the question, here. so let's just give a specific example. So the specific example I would give is in the coverage of... Um, uh, institutions that they decided that they didn't like. So they decided that they didn't like institutions uh, who were, you know, behind the scenes, maybe at the city. And then then went off and, and painted these individuals as, um, as nefarious, as uh, various... Um, 
I, I suppose in, in ways that were not complementary to um, the, the way that they should be operating. Fine. It's very specific. But then, of course, they reported it in a way that um, they gave their political slant on it. When they were complained to about it, they chose not to act upon it. Why? Because they said, well, it's editorial freedom. It's our decision as to how we uh, colour, uh, you know, particular institutions. And, and this is the point, is that if you have a look at that, if you look at their coverage of Brexit, which was not uh, particularly uh, covered them in glory, did it? Uh, if you have a look at how they've covered themselves in, in certain different referenda and the way that they've they've looked at that. It's never it's never as clear as you might say, and I'm afraid that they have been tainted by the fact that their presenters have sometimes gone off and, and also used social and digital media in a way that's not exactly complimentary. Well, you've not given me a single specific example there of Ofcom finding against the BBC and saying that they have not that they've breached their impartiality requirements, I'm afraid. And you're conflating two issues. You're talking about what you feel is the um, presentation of the BBC, the BBC output. We're talking here about a specific example of a non-executive director interfering in the editorial um, decision making and the recruitment of a senior editorial executive in the BBC. Well, Those it's not interfering issues. in editorial, is it? It's interfering if you if, if you think if it's interfering. Telling, it's giving their advice on on making telling, an appointment. The head of who the person leading the recruitment to a senior editorial position that you cannot appoint this candidate because the government's fragile trust in the BBC will be shattered. I'm afraid I can't see anything more political in terms of an example than that. And that should not happen. But we'll that's begin... exactly what a non-executive director should right. be doing, that they should no, be looking not, at the appointment. No, it's not. Oh, it's oh, not so... what a non-executive director Okay, so if doing. nobody questioned the political allegiances of this particular appointment, that would be fine, would it? What I'm saying is that the people doing the recruitment will be carrying out the recruitment in a proper way. You will can't they? just have people. How can you trust that? Because I do trust. I trust the people involved. So you to trust do the a BBC. I, I trust the BBC. Because there are so many definitely. people who are listening now who do not trust the BBC because they're not impartial on things like Brexit. They haven't been impartial on their coverage of political You're matters. conflating the issues again. I'm oh, oh, oh. You know, that's a, I'm sorry, that's a non argument. I'm talking about recruiting a senior editorial executive. You're yes, exactly. About something different. And I'm talking about how it's presented. And I'm talking about the people who actually do the job. And when you're talking about that, and if you're saying, OK, you're conflating two issues, yeah, I might be conflating the issues because, in fact, they should be conflated because if if somebody has political allegiances and you are trying to make sure that you are having impartial uh, people who are deciding on the news agenda and that person is not impartial, isn't it right for a non-executive non director to pick them up? You're saying that this applicant was not impartial? I don't know. Well, well, yeah, you don't know, but then you're making, you're making that assumption and you're telling me that this person should not be appointed if they've got political views. Uh, Where, and I'm, I'm simply asking you for the evidence of that. Well, the, the evidence is there, but isn't it right that well, where in is the recruit? Yeah, but the isn't evidence? it right? But hang on a second. Isn't it right that a non-executive director, if they think that somebody is politically motivated, isn't it right that they should ask that that person is vetted into that job? Everybody who goes into a job in that sort of level of job in a broadcasting in a public service broadcaster would be properly vetted. And they wouldn't be appointed if they were not the right person for the job and they didn't satisfy the requirements. You're, you're what, saying, should not yes, happen, we, what should not happen is a non-executive director interfering in a process of recruitment because they don't because they are doing the political bidding of the government. I, you see, I'm sorry, but I don't think that I can agree with you on the basis that if, if that's a non fine, I don't mind if you don't agree with me. But if I'm a non-executive director you for your evidence to back up the allegations that you're making. Yes, but and if a non-executive director, it's absolutely right that they should be asking of the political uh, connections or otherwise of, of senior appointments. This wasn't a request to ask for the political connection. This was a, an instruction to the person leading the recruitment saying you cannot appoint her because the government's fragile trust in the BBC will be shattered if you do. Isn't that, that good insight? That instruction by somebody that had no right to interfere in that recruitment process. OK, well, that's And your... that's why Robbie Gibbs' position is unsustainable and he should go. OK, that's your view. Joe Stevens, Shadow Culture Secretary, thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning here on Talk Radio. Well, look, that's one view. I'm not sure necessarily that people would uh, agree with you on that, but why not? Let's call it out.